All right, our next two presenters are Barish Kashkin and Suhas Mathur. Barish has his PhD from NYU Poly, and Suhas has his PhD from Rutgers Winlet. Hi. Uh, this project is really about discovering and tracking botnets. So several of, of us involved in this project, me, myself, uh, Suhas, RT and uh, Andrea, so we picked just two to present it for some reason. <laughs> so, um, just going back. Okay. So, uh, you probably, we all know uh, what a botnet is. Botnet is basically a network of compromised machines, uh, hosts, that operate under the control of a botmaster. In order to operate, botnets or members of a botnet uh, needs to receive commands from their master. Traditionally, they receive commands from a central location, which could be an IP address or a URL domain name, could be an IRC channel or even a Twitter account, but some central location. So uh, current botnet tracking algorithms take advantage of the central, centralized structure to track botnets. Basically, uh, which one is the? Anyways, uh, if one of the bots detected in the centralized structure here, uh, these uh, botnet detection system systems can potentially find the bot master, and from the master they can find other uh, other bots in the network. This type of analysis becomes a little bit complicated when the bots use peer-to-peer -peer architecture, where we saw where we see in the right side. Uh, there, in in the peer-to-peer -peer ar architecture, there is no central location. Every bot is both a client and a server, and the comments are distributed among the botnets in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. So in this project, we try to track this type of botnets and try to use this similar uh, analysis techniques, basically starting from a known few bots and find other bots kind of analysis and move uh, this kind of approach to the peer-to-peer -peer architecture. Now, Suhas will talk about our goals and challenges a little bit and our methodology. I couldn't figure out how to use this. <laughs> so given that, uh Peer-to-peer -peer bots are harder to discover and uh, harder to track. Uh, our, our main goal in this project is actually to discover individual peer-to-peer -peer communities uh, in the internet. And by that I mean uh, all kinds of peer-to-peer -peer communities. For example, Skype is a peer-to-peer -peer community. A file sharing system like Kaza would be another peer-to-peer -peer community. And once we figured out that here is a peer-to-peer -peer community, we want to uh, then check if that community is malicious by using some sort of side information. For example, are members of this community engaged in uh, spamming activity, scanning activity, or are a significantly large fraction of the members of this uh, community a member of an existing blacklist? Uh, and, and then track the behavior of that peer-to-peer -peer community as a function of time. And uh, our guiding principle is we want to detect uh, the existence of a malicious community as quickly as possible so that we can uh, sort of preempt its behavior or figure out that it's there even before it uh, goes into an attack stage. So uh, some of the challenges in this project are, li are listed on the right-hand side. Uh, the biggest challenge is that the scale of the problem is humongous, right? The, the amount of data that, we, th that we're dealing with is absolutely huge. Uh, we need to separate out all non-peer-to-peer -peer traffic from peer-to-peer -peer traffic. So all traffic that, that's sort of following a client-server type model, we're not interested in that, so we filter that out. Uh, we have Partial visibility into, into network traffic, of course, we can only observe traffic that's crossing the, uh, the boundary of the AT&T wired backbone. And uh, another interesting challenge is that any given host in the internet can be part of more than one peer-to-peer -peer community. So uh, my desktop at home uh, is, is part of the Skype community. It's also part of Kaza. And uh, uh, it might even be part of a malicious peer-to-peer -peer botnet. No, hopefully not. But. So the approach that we take to this problem is a graph theoretic one. The first step is to take this massive amount of data and build a graph. Uh, by graph, I mean just nodes and edges, where a node consists, is, uh, signifies an uh, internet host, and an, an edge uh, implies uh, some sort of communication, a peer-to-peer -peer communication between them. Uh, and then we try to mine this graph for highly connected components. So highly connected subgraphs sort of indicate that this might be a peer-to-peer -peer community. Uh, and 
we use timing information uh, to separate different peer-to-peer -peer communities, sort of separate Skype out and separate Gaza out, and uh, uh, potential malicious communities. Uh, and finally, we use this uh, side information that I talked about. So uh, this is very much an ongoing work. It's work in progress. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll conclude our talk with a simple example of, a, of one of the graphs that we've been studying. Uh, and I'll hand it back to Barish. Yeah. So um, we're running out of time, but this is basically what we see in, the, in one of our subnets. Uh, well, each node here is an IP address. And the color red indicates an IP which was in contact with known bad IP, which was listed in, in some blacklist, external blacklist. So we clearly see some peer-to-peer -peer activity here. We see different communities talking to each other. Uh, and our intuition is that the green nodes, which stays closer to the uh, red nodes on the graph, might be infected as well, even though they haven't exhibited any malicious activity. Like Sua said, this is an ongoing uh, project. We're still uh, trying to make sense out of these graphs. But this is what kind of, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, just five more seconds. So this uh, closer look to, to this uh, graph here. So the big uh, community in the, in, in the middle we see, uh, they all turn out to be open web proxies, the community of web proxies. But yeah, like we said, we're st still trying to make sense out of it. So. Thank you.